It's only fair. I feel for the guys. Oh, this is dumb. It's all wet. Uh, yeah, it's all the more shocky. <sighs> hey guys, welcome back to KNS Get Out. It is a beautiful spring-like day today. It is gorgeous out here. It hasn't been like this the last few days. We didn't, oh, no. didn't get this luxury while we were <laughs> installing the fence or doing any of the other stuff, but now that it's up, at least we got it this, right? It is what it is. Hey, we're gonna show you we finished out Goatville. We are so excited. Still yes. some minor tweaks to do. We'll show you that along the way. But yesterday was the first day that we finally got the goats out into Goatville, got Hercules out there, started working on their electric fence training. That's interesting. It was a little bit stressful. <laughs> yeah. Not gonna lie, it was a little bit stressful. Understandably so. So we'll show you guys some of that from yesterday for their very first experience out there. But today, we're gonna take them back down, see how they do and uh, just kind of monitor the fence and check functionality and maybe make a few tweaks here and there. See if they're still comfortable with it. Yeah, but th this is th the feeling of completion and being able to get them out there. This is just a very, very exciting moment for all of us, really. <laughs> you got a buddy. I got a buddy. He's the one that when he comes up to you to get attention, you have to actually give it to him because it doesn't last very long. No. Well, hey, let's get right to it and get them out there and uh, see how much they enjoy munching on yeah. all the things Goatville has to offer. Can you stay out of the fence today? Hercules is a little different story with the fence. If you guys remember from when we first came out here, started taking them on the trails, uh, he and a barbed wire fence got into it and the poor goober hit it and then continued to press into it, cut his head a little bit. He's fine, but a similar experience with the electrical fence. You know, just gonna take everybody a little bit of time. We haven't worked with Nala on it yet, and we've got a few strategy ideas, but once we get that solidified, we'll keep moving. Yeah. All right, let's get out there. Okay. All right, boys, it's time. Hey, Luigi. Mauro, are you ready? Herc, are you ready? Come on, let's do this. Yeah, the end of the day yesterday ended up with a uh, big boy powering through the fence and then throwing a little bit of a wine fest the rest of the day and he just hung out in here and went to bed. So we're gonna see. What do you think, buddy? Come on, boys. Focus. Okay, we gotta stay inside the fence today, remember? That's good, boys. The Come on, boys. The goats, remember? Come on. Mario's like, ah, yes, my scratching post. I met you yesterday and I love you. Yeah. <laughs> right to it. Yep. That's going to be his first stop every time he comes out. We're not 100% sure if Hercules remembers what happened yesterday. Oh, I bet he remembers. He's a little skittish, but we haven't made a dash for the fence yet. Come here, buddy. Do you want to walk around with me? He acts like there's landmines in here. He said, Dad, there is. Yesterday I was just walking and then I hit one. We well, I'm glad he at least came in today. Yeah. So what I'm gonna try to do with him is exactly what we did with the goats. Remember yeah. yesterday as we walked, <laughs> I bet the goats <laughs> shadowed us very tightly and did a great job. They're kind of <laughs> I'm not sure what he's doing, but he's pushing up on my head. But the ghost did a good job at finding, hey, you know what, here's where the fence is, so we stay on the inside. We got down to the bottom corner, and both Mario and Luigi were kind of eyeballing it, but they were like, yeah, we're not going to test it. This one just gave up on it, ran back to his pen. So, you want to try some perimeter walk today, buddy? Hmm? We'll stay with you, okay? You're getting my leg all wet from your jewels. Oh, and the back of my neck. He is loving that. These two? Yeah, look at Mario. He's just been scratching his head nonstop. They needed this so bad. I, yeah. You know, oh man, I, that does not smell good. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know that that's all mud. You know, we, we, they got acclimated to the land, the sounds, the critters, life with Hercules, but ultimate goal was to get them out here so they could clean on this, eat on this, and just have a good time out here and it didn't take but what a minute yesterday and this yeah is what they, they adapted doing. pretty quickly yeah 
Ouija got hit, what, two or three times. He Yeah, but he intentionally went and checked it out, too. Oh, he did. Too. Yeah, he walked right up, sniffed it, put his nose on it, and said, what's this, do? <laughs> and then made a fun little noise and ran. Mario kind of looked at him and was like, um, I don't think you want to touch that. So two more times, and Luigi figured it out. Yeah, Mario, he seems like he kind of senses it and yeah. leaves it alone. He's just, he's got a pretty sharp head on his shoulders. Mario gets things. I don't know if it's because of our talks, you know. I gave him an encyclopedia, just one. Oh, really? Yeah, the letter G, in case you want to read about goats. <laughs> He's pretty sharp, though. All right, Herc, you want to go for a little walk through the trail? Can you stay away from the fence? Why don't you come on the inside of me, buddy? I think the goats will follow eventually, too. There's a good boy. Stay on the inside, okay? I'm going to check the voltage periodically up there by the charger. I was at easily eight kilovolts, give or take. Yep. 7.2. And remember, it does pulse. Oh, so that's why it keeps dropping. Yeah, so if you put your hand on it, it may not shock you immediately, but you hang on to it, it's going to get you. Are you going to try it? I, I'm really tempted to. <laughs> I, it, something about, I know they're not humans, but it, it feels slightly inhumane to expect these animals to abide by it and me not know what they're feeling when they get hit. Well, two of the three are very pleased with the move. <laughs> Herc's like, wait a minute, I don't really care because you guys will take me out and we can go everywhere. Why would I come in here? Well, they have zero hesitation, which makes me very happy. It cracks me up. They, they try to play like two cool goats. And when you walk in, they want nothing to do with you. They're like, oh, cool, we're free. We're going to go over here and chew things up. But then as you start walking around, you hear these little goats start following you, and they just kind of stick close to us. It's pretty cute. So we're going to spend some time out here with them so they know and we know we're leaving the fence alone. We understand and respect it. I love that they are uh -oh, tied enough to one another that they do this together, but they also don't care that we're here with them, you know? Yeah. See, he, he just kind of turned from it like he could feel the current. And uh, eventually the goal would be that we come out, when we feed them in the mornings, we just open this back gate, and they can have all this room to roam all throughout the day. And then we'll close it when we call them up for food at night so that Herc doesn't have to prowl this area for predators. But at least right now, that's our initial plan. Yeah. Also, I don't know that we're going to be able to get Herc to come down here. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, and that's part of the debate is if we let him out, you know, and he goes on the walks and things with us, he couldn't care less about an extra three quarters of an acre, which somebody did ask, I think, in our last premiere, maybe a comment as well. I think, I, I need to get you a better assessment, but I, I think we're at about three quarters of an acre, if not close to one full acre that we enclosed. It's obviously not a perfect square or rectangle. Yesterday when Luigi got hit, he got super inquisitive and he gave it a what for stare. And he'd see some over here and he'd just stare at it. Like he was upset with it or something. And then he goes back in up on the hurt cut and he looks right there where it connects up to the pen. He just, and I'm like, hey, bud, just tell your brother that's what it is that's shocking you guys <laughs> and to stay away from it. Speaking of which, he keeps, he keeps trying to creep down. And I wonder if we go a little further across so that he can come through the woods. But it's almost like he's afraid to get in the woods. Well, he doesn't really have a good path through there. That that's big a good boy. boy. Come here, handsome man. Would you please get away from the fence? Come here, buddy. I won't hurt you. It's You're the, so brave. It's the fence, honey. It's that white fence right there behind Mama. Yeah. These boys are so happy. They are. And you know what Mario texted me last night? He was out here in the goat shelter, or in the goat pen. And I got a random text, looked down, it's Mario. He said, thank you so much for not making us share this with Fox and Fat Man. <laughs> I, think, I think Mario's royalty is kind of starting to set in with him. He's like, you know what? I'm I'm the goat here. I'm the boss goat. <laughs> and technically he even bosses Herc around if he needs to. Those horns get lowered and he does his job and big softy over here says fine. I'll pick on your brother. They are just eating it up. 
are. That is a great sight to see. See, and this is where Mario, yesterday, over in that corner over there, this is where he starts to look at it. He's like, man, I might need to explore over there. But then it kind of dawns on him, hey, there's that fence. Herc's like, don't do it. I went through it yesterday. Don't do it, Mario. Do not do it. Life changing. They don't even act too terribly like as we walk up on them. They don't act like we're going to try to snag them up or they're mm. not supposed to be out here. They did for like the first 20 seconds yesterday. They thought. It was like, are we okay to be out here? Yeah, and they didn't bolt, which was awesome. They just tried yep. to stay ahead of us at least a step so that we'd have to work a little bit to gather them. But, Until we came down here and then they followed us. Oh, yeah. The yeah. whole thing. Well, especially, especially after Mr. Weege hit that fence the first time. Meow. <laughs> It was cute, guys. It was not mean. It was cute. He barely got it. He barely got it. He was better about it. Herc is the one like, fence, go! <laughs> Luigi intentionally went up to it to check it out. Yeah. Yeah, all of them, I'm trying to think. Actually, you know what? No, our goats were not exposed to electricity over at Dad's. Nope. Herc and Nala both hit about, I want to say, three or 4,000 volts because of that chicken mesh. Yeah. And they both, either one just kind of let out a y little like a yellow. Little yelp and then. Little yelp. 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 No, it's not yellow. No, it's just what came out. Yellow. Oh, okay. <laughs> they both hit it, made a noise, but didn't really have much of a problem with it and didn't traumatize him. But he's, he's still figuring it out. So the next big step is going to be letting them out and being unsupervised inside Goatville. Yeah, but. From what we've seen so far, I really think they'll be fine. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know this is like the first day, but still. Careful, bud. Careful. This will be the test to yeah. see if he decides to bolt through the fence again. If he hears any kind of vehicle with a modified exhaust or something that's just a little rumbly or motorcycle, it piques his interest. He says, I'm just guarding around here. I know. So yeah, for right now, we're, we're going fully supervised and probably yeah. will for a little bit till we are comfortable. Well, and yesterday, Mario kind of walked up close to it and it's like he could sense that it was on or something was different with it. Yeah. So he kind of stayed away from it. Well, and I've heard and I've read and I feel like this is true based on what I can see here. You know, if I get this thing right here, we're a good eight inches or so from it. You know, it's picking up almost a full kilovolt. And animals obviously have a much better perception of things like this than we do. So it radiates a little bit of electricity. <laughs> I, I mean, I knew I put gonna... you to sleep when I was talking, but I'm sure the rest of the, uh, the viewers are yawning at the same time. Long story short, look, there's a little field around this guy. And I do believe animals can pick up on that eventually. I mean, I would think that it's true based on what we've seen other than Herc but with the goats I think it's pretty good oh he found a skeleton oh, what'd you find Herc he says well if we're gonna be down what here what did you find oh goodness it looks like a pelvis what'd you get bud go show daddy he's always so proud look at that curled tail he's and if I don't so take happy. it from him he's a happy camper is that a I don't know what that is. It almost looks like a pelvis or something. He's pretty happy about it, though. He's pretty hey, happy. Hey, don't forget about the fence. He forgot about the fence. Stay Look off at that the fence. Trot. You want to see if these boots do the same thing as my other boots? Yeah, go for it. Tiny bit more. You didn't even look at the camera. I did. It, well, because it's it's a, <laughs> a little bit more. <laughs> A little bit more than the mucks. The mucks have a whole lot more rubber, and these got a pretty thick sole, but yeah, when you take your shoes off, it is a completely different experience. No way, you're really gonna take them off, huh? It's the only way to know, right? It's only fair. I feel for the guys. Oh, this is dumb. It's all wet. Uh, yeah, it's all the more shocky. <sighs> oh! I heard that. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that's just debilitating, man. Like the whole body just goes, yep. I don't know. I mean, multiple pulses in a row. Yeah, that, I, I can't say that hurt 
it's just debilitating. Like you can't, you know, when it's happening, whatever noise is about to come out, if you got a little gas in the chamber, you better let that go before you touch that <laughs> fence. It was all right. I Kirk says, yeah, I know. No trauma. Yeah, I know, I, I am not about to test it, but I'm curious, A, how many times do you get hit? And B, how does it feel to get continually hit as you're going through it? Yeah. You know, dragging across it. I am just so happy that their diet consists of more than just grain. Grain and hay. Grain and hay and straw, and I threw some leaves in there every once in a while, but I want this, ah, uh, yeah. They're I mean, pretty happy. We cannot be down here in that in the spring and summer, at least not prior to having them out here because no. all this stuff you see that they're eating on, that all grows about twice as big as it is now. This makes it feel so much more like, like farm or homestead now. We have like a dedicated pasture. We've already got a date at the auction that you and I are going that you said I could get some more goats. That's news to me. <laughs> I didn't know about this date yet. I just like to drop these things in so that maybe the viewers will kind of help support it. Mm -hmm. They're all in support of you getting another goat, trust well, me. I know, but what I'm saying is you have a much harder time telling them no than me. You have no problem telling me no or just completely ignoring me. <laughs> but when they start telling you, then you're like, oh, what did he do to me? So it's a strategy, guys. It's a team effort. You and me versus Shannon. She wants all the animals, I promise. Just tell her about it. You know, if you get new goat friends, if you put them in here, do you think Mario and Luigi warn them about the fence? Or do you think they sit back and cross their legs and just watch and they're like, <laughs> wait till old Bob hits that wire? I think they're like, hey, new guy, go check out that white string. <laughs> yeah. They're like, hey, hey, go see how that stuff tastes. It's delicious. Yeah. I, I promise you, he's in such a euphoria that like as he's eating he's like closing his eyes and then just rubbing his face <laughs> on the sticks he's just like this is how it's supposed to be this is amazing i mean i want to say i'm even happier than them but they're displaying that that may not be true they're they pretty happy are so happy right now i'm actually glad though you know that we had the pin time yeah. before this because then it kind of allowed us to take the time to bond with them, build our relationships. Yeah. They got to know each other and Hercules and their land. And now we've opened this up and it's kind of like, surely they see it as a gift and they're gonna be grateful, right? Yeah. Well, and they, it was good because they learned to trust us. So when we were walking through here with them, they learned, okay, follow me, stay with me. Yeah, no, I agree. That is a good feeling. Like it, it's kind of weird, I, I don't know. If you've ever had goats, you'll know what I'm talking about, or animals for that matter. When you're up there at the top and these goats try to pretend like they couldn't care less about you, and then you start <laughs> walking and you turn around and you realize you got two little goats following you, like, hey, 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 it's not pretty too far. Cute. It's a good feeling, man. It's a very good feeling. And of course, this big guy, too, who we're not making a big deal out of it because we want him to feel natural down here, but I'm very happy he's in here and he hasn't hit the fence yet. Yeah. Hopefully, he doesn't today. We still got the, the parade going on, man. Except Herc. He'll come eventually. These two though, they wanna stay with us. They're like, okay, where are you going? Hey, did you see what I made over here? I did. I believe this was the second dead tree that I dropped from right here that had a little bit more life left to it than the other one. And so I thought, hey, I'm a lumberjack. I'll do some fancy cuts so I can get my saw done in this thing sideways and cut an open face. You did great. I need you to make it a little bit wider though so I can sit on it with you. <laughs> well, it wasn't originally going to be a bench. I just wanted to cut a sliver out and see how far the rot went down. And then I thought, you know what? If I cut this big enough, it could be a bench for all the animals or a walking plank for the goats or... Herc. I do think we should leave it as a walking plank for the goats. Come here, Come buddy. buddy. Can you put your feet up there? There's a boy. You're using it. That's it's my a good boy. first piece of furniture on Shady Acres. <laughs> Natural furniture. Yeah. The only one who has not come around the fence yet, and that's by design, by our, our plan, is Nala. Yeah. I would love for her to not have to get hit. Me too. I just don't know. We have words with her that she understands more so, obviously, than these animals because she's been with us for so long. So we're going to try. I think we're going to put her harness on her and her leash. Yeah. Bring her in. Bring her around Teach the backside. Leave it. 
Yeah, we're gonna use our leave it command and see how she does with that. The biggest issue is gonna be what they're used to in the pen, and she did this at Grandpa Adler Farms too. She comes up to the fence and just wants to torment Ouija. And yeah. then Luigi wants to put his head through and she bites at his horns and everything. Well, obviously, that's not going to work here. here. We're hoping that Luigi knows better than to go trying to stick his head through the fence. I think he will stay far enough away and more inward that I hope it won't be an issue. Hope. Sometimes they get their ideas just overtake all logic and they do silly things, but... I don't know. I mean, you know, if Nala gets hit, she gets hit. It's definitely not something we prefer. Definitely not something we're going to show you because that would just be sad. But well, I mean, the others, the boys got hit. I mean, they had to learn it somehow. Yeah. So it's only natural for her to have to go through the same. And thing. I touched it. So Kyle did touch it. I touched multiple it multiple times. I'll, I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll do it again if I need to. Uh, it's you know, it's not the end of the world. It's it's not it's not a showstopper it's just obviously stunning i haven't touched it but i've well, babe, touched take an your, electric fence take so your I don't boots off no you haven't touched my electric fence that's true you didn't know how many volts were running across the one you were touching that's true you didn't know what turbo wire was that's true or a charger i know what chargers are now you do okay <laughs> <laughs> all right babe take your shoes off get comfortable and go over there and touch it I really don't think I want you to actually, because <laughs> you're gonna make everybody think it's way worse than it is. Would I do that, Herc? Would I make everybody think it's way worse than it hey, really is? Hey, he gets his overly dramatic uh, reactions from someone, and I don't know who. <laughs> I do too, it's you. It's 100% you. <laughs> I knew that. They have not stopped munching mm -hmm. since I got out here. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. I am glad to see this guy kind of hang out with us and take a break though. Yeah. This is good. So to finish this up, Shannon and I may play with the height of the lines a little bit just so it's not quite as easy for him to climb through and just say, oh, I'm doing it and then get shocked the whole way. So maybe closing the gaps in some of the lines and then I've got to tension one of the lines where I tied it off, the two strands when they came together, I tied it and I thought I put enough knots in there and spaced them out well enough that they wouldn't uh, give up tension on me. But I don't have a tensioner. Maybe I need to use metal crimpers or something, but I, I want to tidy up my tie off. Well, we want to see them exhibit awareness of the fence. I would like to see all three of them, you know, show me that they know if I mess with that fence, I'm going to get shocked. Well, and the goal is that when we come out to feed them in the mornings, we let them out here to just hang out and graze and browse. Yeah. Stretch their legs, run around, jump on things. Yep. Well, I'm curious to know if them being out here before spring and summer, if that like hinders the growth once the season comes or if it's just because it's just the two of them, is that a not enough goat power? I don't know. To maintain, you know, almost an acre goat power man like that's what they should have done with horsepower it should have been goat power how much goat power your truck got i think horses have more power than goats that's not the point it's a totally different power yeah but don't you want your truck to have more power than a goat well i mean you could have like 1500 goat power would be equivalent to like 250 horsepower <laughs> it's just a, it's a different metric you know oh goodness i got climbing skills mom <laughs> he says, oops, I slipped. Luigi, if you start pooping right now, buddy, we got a problem. Could you aim it somewhere else? They're going to start sparring right there. Or he's going to come over and pick on me. What is your deal, buddy? You are so weird. He is looking for like the master spot that will get that spot in his horns. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Very much in agreement. Yep, very much. Mm -hmm. He broke one of the little twigs and he's like, what the heck happened to my post? 
<laughs> Luigi's like, hey, I was eating that. Yeah, I'd really like to get those spools and things down here, down there where there's a little bit less to climb on and see if maybe there's a simple solution at least for some water, you know, put yeah. some extra water around here. Are you telling me thank you? He says, thank you, Dad, for opening up Goatville for me. You're welcome, bud. Thank you for cleaning it up. Yeah, thank you for cleaning it up. Why do you do weird things? Why would you want to be up here when you have all this place down here? He's my buddy. Look how happy they are, babe. This is bringing me way more peace than I can put into words. We have felt a pressure and desire to get them out here so they can stretch out and eat on things other than grain. This is oh, fantastic. Yeah. Man, now you can build them some more obstacle courses. Yeah, I'm excited. Got the spools up there. I may even bring my chainsaw in and kind of make some of this a little more manageable for them. Just shave it so they got a nice little flat spot to walk on. I don't think they want a flat spot to walk on. I think that's the whole thing is they like rough things like that to run and play on. He's going to eat every drop of moss off of this tree. That's great. Mario's in heaven. Huh? Mario's in heaven. I can't stop. They both are. I'll take this leaf. I'll take this leaf. Okay, in all the videos we've ever made, I've never done this successfully. I'm gonna to try to give you very high points. And I really, I, I just wanna hit on the things that, coming from a person who didn't know anything about electric fences, it was hard for me to find some of the simplest answers because a lot of the articles and blogs and videos just kind of assume that you've done this before. I literally needed what people might consider to be the dumbest pieces of information so you before I could go on. electric fencing for dummies. I did, yeah. Like, you know, it's almost like nobody out there thinks that anybody's putting up their very first fence for the very first time. And I was like, wait, 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 you can't move on yet because I'm still missing these things. So, short version, here we go. Short version. Tension is everything. Get tension on the lines, and if animals are gonna hit it especially, make sure it is well secured. We did drive these T-posts on the outside of some of our insulated posts that are great, but they're a little flexible. So as you're putting tension on, they have a tendency to wanna to lean in. So you might put these at an outward angle. If not, put something on the outside, and then we used baling wire. Hey, you actually got the name right that time. I remembered it. <laughs> we used baling wire to put a little bit of pressure, outward pressure on these guys. So tension is everything. Make sure your posts aren't leaned too much. Another big one. This one they skipped over in all of the articles, but we'll show you over here at the very end of the fence. All right, so this is the very end of the fence. This was the hardest thing for me for some reason to get my head wrapped around. However, you can do it either way. You could either run your strands and finish them here or you can run the strands back and forth and back and forth so it's one big continuous loop. I tied off over here. So that way all of my electric current is coming from where the charger is over there through the fence and then it doesn't have to travel multiple directions from where I'm activating the fence. So when you are running your lines, you don't technically have to be going back and forth and back and forth. You can end them over here. Just make sure you liven them accordingly, obviously. Can you have all separate strands too? Or do you, you could. have to have them connected to be able to have the voltage? You charge? do have to have them connected. So if you did individual strands, let's say I did four different pieces of turbo wire here, I'd have to get what are called jumper cables, kind of like for a car. Okay. And I would just take the electricity and pass it between these with a connecting cable each way. Okay. For us, we just liven the fence in one place and I have all the strands touching by tying the two whenever we got to the end. And then when I came here, I just tied it off. The challenge becomes, how do you get tension on the lines if the lines are all one piece? Remember, we do have the charger that you plug in, dedicated power source for the charger. So this is our charger. This is the M800. This is a fairly stout charger, a little bit more than what we need, but I wanted to make sure and have consistent voltage. I got it on the wall, it's plugged in. That green light, that is when the charge is going through it because it kind of pulses the signal. If that were red, that would indicate that there's a fault that's causing it not to work properly. 
They do have a multitude of solar options so that you don't necessarily have to be by a power source. In this case, we wanted something consistent and because it is shady acres, I wanted to not have to worry about the solar part of it. Coming off the charger, we have our ground wire and our live wire. And that live wire, in most cases, people will use alligator clamps and put that on. And as long as all your strands are connected, this is what's activating the entire fence. That's just a little 12 gauge wire and I've got it wrapped. So I'm gonna tidy this up a bit. Right now I've got a little bit of extra slack in the wire. Please don't touch it, Herc. And then I just got this sledgehammer holding it down so that it didn't cause any more pull on it. But that's my activation wire. This is my ground rod. And what that's doing is if I touch the fence, then the electrical current is coming through the fence and completing the circuit with my body <laughs> down to the ground because the ground rod is in it. So I create a loop between me, the electric fence, and earth, and that's what delivers that shock to me, to animals, same concept. So grounding is, you know, if you have a lot of problems with your fence and you're pulling voltage like you're supposed to, check your grounding situation. See if you need to add some ground rods and stuff. So this cable that's coming through right See, I, here. I didn't really want to highlight all of this yet. <laughs> well, all I was going to ask was, do you plan on burying it later? Yeah, I, I will talk to you guys about the plan, but ideally what I'd like to do, if this works out, I'll probably put this closer to this so that I can attach the actual wire to the post and take some of that weight off. You see how it's kind of sagging down? Yeah. And why I put it on the third one, in my head it makes sense based on the lines and where the ties end and all that stuff, but I could technically put that anywhere on the fence and it should be fine. So yeah, we would ideally like to bury that line right there and the ground line, same story. I do not want those above ground. You can throw them in conduit or whatever and that'll a help. Of, but. A lot of people on, on YouTube, I think even Chad, some people have quoted that, you know, it just takes one time. Your animals get hit that one time and then they're fine. They won't touch it again. Not our animals. It can take a whole day. Our, our animals are an extra special smart, yeah. It, it did, yeah, it took a whole day. It took one, one day. But that was still only like a couple times of them each getting shocked for him to realize. Well, I think, I think I mean, Mario was two or three. I think good old Weege gave it a good five try. It wasn't that many. Hercules hit it once or twice and then he ran through it. That was the catastrophic that was one. That one, it that held, was really rough. It held on for a minute and he got hit the whole way through, but you know, other than that, yeah, not, not too bad. And today, Hercules is getting a lot closer to it. This is the first time, the very first time we've been on the outside of the fence while they're in there. And so far, nobody's trying to jump up on the fence or come through it or anything. So proud, proud moment. Yeah, I think they know, I think it's good. You know, we'll, we'll keep you in the know, but this is our first experience and I would say overall, it's pretty good. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. My my one concern that I'm nervous about is deer hitting it because this is a travel through for them. It is. All right, guys. Well, you're looking at two very happy homesteaders, farmers. We could be farmers now with an electric I fence. I guess we could technically be farmers now. Yeah, two very happy farmers because they have three very happy farm animals. <laughs> <laughs> Slowly chomping. She's going to eat everything. It's perfect. Yeah. Well, again, we'll keep you guys posted, give you any information we have on the electric fence and how well it works for us or any pitfalls that we find on it. But we're very, very pleased these guys can get out here, stretch their legs out, get a little bit different variety in the scenery and the food. We're very grateful for this relationship with Gallagher so that we can put their products out here to help manage our animals, keep them safe. I, I got to see Kyle get shocked like three times. She enjoyed it. She laughed harder at me getting shocked than any of the animals. I didn't laugh at the animals getting shocked. <laughs> <laughs> That's so weird. Like, like people, there's animal people and there's like, yeah, my husband got shocked three times and I laughed and laughed. But my goats got hit and I cried and cried. It's a little bit funny when you get hit. I'm sorry. Well, I did do it to myself. You would laugh if I got shocked. Only if you gave me permission. Well, guys, we can't tell you how much we love and appreciate you coming by, joining us on this journey and helping us. So much information has come from you guys and we're very, very grateful. And as always, guys, we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. I'm so excited that they're climbing on this tree. I Mario's knew that like, they would love this. Okay, new terrain. I gotta remember how to traverse this stuff. Atta boy. Don't forget how to be a goat. This <laughs> makes me so happy. I think Herc's about done with it. He's like, yeah, I've been <laughs> out here.